What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're doing a comparison between the iPhone 10 and the Galaxy Note 9. And Austin here happens to use the iPhone 10 as a daily driver, and I've been using the Galaxy Note 9 lately. Look at you, using unreleased smartphones. So cool. This would be Team yes. iOS. This is Team Android, as you can see team from Android. the background, which is obviously two different colors, uh, of course. indicating some deep spiritual knowledge of particular operating systems that are used on mobile devices. Thank you for that. So when it comes down to it, the obvious reason or one of the main ones that you would grab a Note, any Note, Note 8, Note 9, whatever, is this guy right here, the S Pen. I mean, yeah. this is where you're gonna find that kind of device, unless you're buying a stylus for your There are iPhone. a lot of big phones, there are a lot of big Android phones, but basically none of them do the stylus as well as the Note. Yeah. And I think that's something that's been going around for a long time, right? I mean, I used to use the Note 2 back in the day, and back then, the stylus was a big part of it, but it was also one of the only really large screen phones that you could pick up. Nowadays, that's not really the differentiating feature. It's definitely going to be the S Pen. So Dom, why do you use the Galaxy Note 9? Well, of course, I've been using it for an upcoming review on this guy, but okay. I'm actually, you know, I like the big screen experience. You actually now, really do like it. it. It's a great, I mean, it is a great phone, like no doubt. Like one, one thing is though that should be mentioned is it's nearly the same phone as the Galaxy S9 Plus. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in a lot of ways. I don't mean to discredit this phone because there's a lot of cool stuff with the S Pen that we'll touch on later, but you get a big screen here and that's really been the front runner for, for the Note series against all their smartphones sure. since its inception, basically. The difference between the S9 Plus and the Note is pretty small this year, though. In previous years, there was at least, you know, you're gonna get like the extra camera, you're going to be getting like, a significantly larger screen, but this year it feels like the main difference really is going to be just the S Pen, plus I guess a bigger battery. Thing is though, yeah, you do get a bigger battery and they did carry over pretty much the identical camera system from the Galaxy S9. Which is fine. It's great. I mean, it, it is definitely a very awesome camera and that's probably one thing we should touch on with the iPhone 10. So, I'm gonna be real with you, right? This is not a fully fair comparison. I'm not just trying to backpedal because I got an iPhone in my pocket. Why are you crying? But I mean, the Note is coming out in August of 2018. The iPhone will be a year old next month. Like this yeah. is sort of an unfair comparison. The it new is. iPhone would be more fair. But that being said, I actually do think the iPhone holds up reasonably well against the much newer Note 9. And to be honest, I don't think that there's going to be that drastic of differences, at least in like the camera department, because yeah. cameras are kind of at a pinnacle on every smartphone now. They haven't really changed much over the last year. Now, one thing to note is that both the Note 9 and the iPhone 10 have 12 megapixel shooters, the main yep. shooter on the back, they do 4K 60, all the good stuff that you expect from a 2018 flagship. Though I will say on the Note, it is very awesome that we have a variable aperture here. It's cool. Yeah. It's, it's super cool. I will completely yeah. admit. I mean, I mean it's <laughs> not the most useful feature in the world. I mean, it's, no. it's nice. It's not going to make a massive difference, but getting that extra performance for low light and especially be able to close down a little bit to get just a little bit of a sharper image when you're in fully like lit situations like this. It's, it's a nice feature. I'll yeah. totally admit that. I will say though, against this whole system is that it is a mechanical thing which can technically break. Yeah, but I mean, every like point and shoot camera that's been sold for the last 20 years also has mechanical aperture and that's True. not a problem. So like I mentioned about the S Pen, there are some pretty cool features here, like the ability to snap the shutter with the S Pen, like while you're taking a photo. Or you that's can, cool. You can set it up, you can frame up things. It's pretty nice to be able to do it from far away. I'm glad they have that now. And also you can do things like uh, switch slides and PowerPoint presentations, which is pretty crazy. And the cool thing here is that it's open to third party developers. So it's kind of up to the imagination as to what they can do with this thing. So we talked about some of the main selling points on the Galaxy Note 9, which definitely is the screen size, the S Pen, and I would say the battery life. Those are three main selling yes. points on it. So what are the main selling points for the iPhone 10 in your opinion, design. based on your use? Design. design. I love the design of the iPhone 10. And yes, I say that with a fully straight face because <laughs> I've got a bumper on it right now because I drop my phone all the time. But the, the fact that they switched over to stainless steel still feels really premium. The glass design, yeah, sure, it's not anything crazy these days pretty much all phones have it. But I just love the heft of the phone, and I also really appreciate how small the bezels are. Again, a year on, a lot of phones, such as the Vivo, such as the Oppo, are getting really close to not surpassing it for the pure size. But I really appreciate the little details of like the screen, not only is it going to be curved, it's gonna come all the way out to the edges. It still, to me, looks like the future of what smartphones should be besides the notch, which is sadly the uncool future that we are now living in. Yeah, I, I find it, Pretty interesting too that Samsung didn't go with any notch and they haven't. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I know, it's totally fine. They didn't go with a notch and they left the headphone jack. And yes. so, you know, there's there's a lot of good things in, in the design department here. Of course, it's all glass, so 
You know, yeah. regardless of what you think about Gorilla Glass or whatever, if you drop it, you're very likely to break this thing. But that's almost any 2018 yeah. flagship at this point, exactly. right? Because you do get extra advantages. It makes waterproofing easier for some phones. You can still do it with metal, but yeah. typically speaking, glass is going to make that a little bit easier. Honestly, this, this is definitely the least exciting looking glass phone out there. It's just white or black. Whereas something like that, it actually has like some real color to it. It feels like the future, even though it is going to be a little bit not durable. So I will jump back to the camera real quick because well, we do have a little bit of a slow-mo comparison between these two, whereas there's 960 frames per second. For like 0.02 <laughs> seconds. But it still beats the pants off the slow-mo on the iPhone 10. Mm, it depends on what you're doing. It's I think arguable. It, the 960 looks nice, but it is very low resolution. It is hard to 720p, capture. 720p, yeah. Is it really 720p though? It looks like it's like 360p. <laughs> Come on. Potato <laughs> cam. So as I mentioned before, camera performance between these two is pretty comparable in our opinion. Yeah. And if you want to check out some photos, well, let them roll. I'm just imagining some really cool music right now. Yeah. We're just, like, we're just jamming out. It's like a cool photo of like a dog. And yeah. It's like, like a park and then... So Dom, yes. you're rocking a full 4,000 milliamp hours in your pants right now. Boom. <laughs> so can you care to elaborate on what that actually is gonna give you longevity wise? I mean, it's really hard for me to give you a solid opinion <laughs> right now. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Dom, Dom. Okay, okay. Think of the children, be serious. We're not talking about Jokes aside, the Galaxy Note 9, yes, it does pack a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, but I've only been using it solid for a few days. And I can definitely say that I have charged by the end of my day. Usually yeah. it's within the 20 to 30% range. It depends on, day, yeah, at the end like of the day, when okay. I'm going to bed. Uh -huh. It's actually pretty good. Now, I will have to give some kind of trash talk to the iPhone 10 because oh, okay. I have used the iPhone 10 quite often, okay. right? Very, very often. And I've charged, sometimes charged this thing twice a day. Maybe you should be using it too often. It's probably the case, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, for real though, actually, you've had like poor battery life because the iPhone 10 actually for me has been pretty solid, even though mine's a year old at this point. I think for me, I've been pretty impressed and it's definitely better than pretty much anything besides the 8 Plus. I think that's yeah. definitely been the best iPhone The Plus models wise. are always killing it. Yeah, yeah, but the 10 for me is pretty consistently made it through a full day, even when I'm traveling, even when I'm doing fairly heavy use. That being said though, having an extra thousand milliamp hours would definitely be nice. If my phone wasn't three feet tall. Come on, can we talk about that? This, this phone is, is too big. This phone is too big. It's pretty tall. It's too big. But you have to mention that the newest iPhone 11 or whatever the heck exist. they're gonna call it, is it's, rumored to no, have a 6.5 no, 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 model. You can't do that. This is an iPhone 10 comparison. If you were gonna do an iPhone <laughs> 11 comparison, we would be doing this next month. We're gonna compare it to the iPhone 10, which is a normal, reasonable human size. So let's talk about like the performance of everything here in general. Some of the small features to touch on, such as the fingerprint sensor on the back, which you don't get on the iPhone 10. Okay, so can I actually, I have two things about that. So mind you, you've definitely used the Note 9 for longer than I have. I literally got mine like last night. I've spent maybe an hour with it, but I do appreciate how the actual unroll process of first setting up a fingerprint is super fast. What I don't appreciate is that I've had to do it three or four times before it recognizes my finger on a regular basis. Had you, have you actually seen that problem or is it smooth for you? I haven't really had that problem with this much. And to be honest, I mostly just use the face unlock okay. or the the iris unlock. But you know, it's always nice to have the fingerprint sensor to fall back on, Yes, which is something that you don't get on the I, I totally agree. I will give you this. I do miss the fingerprint sensor. Now, I know a lot of people, my fiance included, have a lot of issues with face ID. I mean, it'll like, you know, recognize it 50% of the time. For me, it actually works really well. I feel like Face ID works 98% of the time. Oh maybe. yeah. And when it works, it's great. It's a little bit on the slow side. Hopefully it's something that can be dressed with the iPhone 11. But I will give you that, the fingerprint sensor plus all the face unlock stuff. I don't know if I totally trust how secure the face unlock is on, on the Note 9. I, I don't know. I know that some previous phones have been a little yeah. easy to hack. But then again, I think if you're using facial recognition on your phone, you're probably not going to be super, super worried about security or you have a identical twin that you're going to worry about. And what are you hiding anyway? So if you're looking to pick up either one of these guys, and to be honest, you should probably wait for the next iPhone iteration to yeah. pick up an iPhone 10, or when that one comes out, get an iPhone 10, it'll be cheaper probably. Yeah, yeah. 
But if you're looking to pick up either of these guys, there are a couple of things that you should know as far as specs are concerned, if you care about those kind of things. So with the Note 9 here, we do have a 6.4 inch display on the front, nice and big, always leading the pack with the big display. You do have six gigabytes of RAM in here, and if you actually get the 512 gigabyte capacity model, you get eight gigabytes of RAM, which I don't understand the logic there, but I mean, it's what, $250 more? For 128 gigabytes with six gigabytes of RAM, you are paying, what was it, $1,000? $1,000. Yeah, 1,000 bucks, making it rain. And with the 512 gigabyte model with eight gigabytes of RAM, you're gonna pay 1,250 bucks. It's so expensive. I mean, I get it that you're getting these amazing phones and I guess they're better, but I feel like $1,000 flagships don't feel that much better than $600 flagships a nope. few years ago. I feel like they're just charging more for them. So both the iPhone 10 and the Note 9 are using Samsung AMOLED panels, which means that they're both really, really nice looking. Uh, personally, when the iPhone 10 came out, I thought it was pretty much the best smartphone display out there. The Note 9, is according to a lot of the benchmarks and stuff is going to be slightly better. I haven't spent a ton of time with it, but both of them are phenomenal, right? I don't yeah. think anyone is going to look at either of these screens and go, Ugh. they're they're so close. Unless you just don't like the fact that the iPhone 10s is smaller. <laughs> oh, so we want to know what you think about these two phones. Are you Team Note 9 or Team iPhone 10? 11. Wait oh, for the 11. Okay, yeah, that too. <laughs> but regardless of which one you like, let's be honest, these are both great phones. Yeah, absolutely. And I happen to be really liking this one, and that's probably because I've been using it a lot recently and just been getting familiar with it for the four of you, which you can check out. So make sure you're subscribed to catch that video when it drops. But. They're both awesome, but let us know what you think in the comments section below. Be sure to leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And like I said, subscribe for more Note 9 coverage coming up in the near future. Thanks again for watching everyone. This is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video. I had a preemptive wave. <laughs>